Hi guys. So last lesson, we looked at the revolt of the Northern Earls. We looked at a huge threat to Elizabeth just 10 years into her reign and how the rich, powerful families from the north of England tried to replace her. Today's lesson, we'll look at another threat that Elizabeth faced. We're looking at the Ridolfi and Frockmorton plots. Now, when I say plots, what I mean is schemes or plans involving a number of people to try to remove Elizabeth in this case. Our learning objectives are going to be to try to understand who was a threat to Elizabeth from 1570 onwards, both in England and abroad, and also try to understand how Elizabeth dealt with these threats. Now, can you make sure you've got the worksheet open in front of you, please, from Google Classrooms to fill in when prompted? The deadline will be in Google Classrooms and we'd like you to submit this by. Please make sure you press submit. Don't do brilliant work and then just leave it. And as always, any questions, feel free to email me. G Brown at stopsleyhighschool.co.uk. Okay, so the Ridolfi plot, first of all, in 1571. Now, Roberto Ridolfi was an Italian banker and a spy for the Pope. There he is there, the black and white pictures, Roberto. And he was arranging a plan or a plot to do three things. Number one, kill Elizabeth I, have her assassinated. Number two, to launch a Spanish invasion of England. Number three, to put Mary, Queen of Scots, who would then be married to the Duke of Norfolk, on the throne. So that's quite similar, that third, wasn't it, really, to the revolt of the Northern Lords before. Again, a common theme, Mary, Queen of Scots, is always heavily involved. She is the Catholic person who could be the leader of England, the heir to the throne. Now, Ridolfi was meeting up with several important people to arrange this plot. He needs help. That includes the Pope, who gave the plot his blessing. If you remember last lesson, the Pope had excommunicated Elizabeth from the Catholic Church. That basically means that he had said, look, she's not recognised by the Catholic Church. She's a threat to the Catholic Church. I would encourage you to get rid of her. King Philip II, um, King Philip II of Spain was also involved. It was his troops that would be being used. The Duke of Alba, there he is there with his wooden stick. Well, he was a Spanish man in charge of Spanish troops in the Netherlands. That was a country that Spain controlled at this time. And of course, the Duke of Norfolk. Now, he gave Rodolfi a letter to show to Philip II, the Duke of Alba and the Pope, saying that he was a Catholic and he was prepared to take part in this plot. Now, that's a change, isn't it, from revolt of the Northern Earls when we had said that the Duke of Norfolk was a Protestant. So either he had changed religion or he was lying. He was secretly a Catholic the whole time. The plot picks up. King Philip II told the Duke of Alba to prepare 10,000 Spanish troops to set sail from the Netherlands to invade. But that's as far as it ever got. This plot never actually took place. Why was that? <clears throat> well, first of all, Elizabeth had someone called Sir William Cecil working for her. Sir William Cecil had spies everywhere in England. And so they had been spying in particular on the Duke of Norfolk. If you remember, after the revolt of the Northern Earls, the Duke of Norfolk was let free. He wasn't killed. But they were still going to keep an eye on him. So spies were monitoring who he was seeing, what was going on. And they took the Duke of Norfolk's servants and they questioned or interrogated them. And the servants confessed everything. They said, no, he is working. He is a Catholic. He is working to bring down Elizabeth. And also, Sir William Cecil was able to collect letters that proved Norfolk was plotting against Elizabeth. Now, this crime of trying to remove your monarch is high treason. It's the worst crime you can commit in Tudor England. So what happened? Well, Rodolphe was abroad when the plan was discovered. And quite wisely, he never returned back to England as the last we ever saw of him. Parliament were furious when they met up and Parliament said the Duke of Norfolk is a traitor. He needs to be killed. And he also said Mary, Queen of Scots, is causing too much damage. 
by keeping her alive in England, the Catholics will try to bring her onto the throne. She needs to be killed as well. Elizabeth only killed Norfolk. He died in June 1572. He was hung, drawn and quartered, which we've gone over before. That's the worst type of punishment you can have for being a traitor. It's where in public you are hung until you are nearly dead. Then you are cut down and your body is basically cut open in front of you. They pull all your insides out in front of you as you die. And then your body is quartered. So your head's cut off, put on a spike to warn people. And then your limbs are cut off and they'd be put around other towns as a warning. If you go against a monarch, this is what happens to you. A truly horrific punishment there for the Duke of Norfolk. But Elizabeth still would not take any action against her cousin, Mary. Mary is still just kept in the castles, sort of as a prisoner, I guess. Now, why is this plot significant? Why do we care about it? Well, this plot came just one year after the Pope had told all the Catholics across the world to get rid of Elizabeth. This was an order he had issued called a papal bull, if you remember. Now, this showed the threat of Catholics. It showed that it was dangerous to keep Mary alive in England. The Catholics, some of the Catholics, I should say, would always try to get rid of Elizabeth and put a Catholic monarch on the throne to save their religion, to do what their religious leader had told them. It also showed how dangerous Spain could be. Spain arguably was the most powerful country in the world at this time, it was either Spain or France, and it was a Catholic country. And it showed that the Catholic Spain wanted Protestantism gone from Europe. And therefore Spain and England could be seen as enemies. OK, so that's the Ridolfi plot there. Have a look at this first task. You've got a fact file of questions. Date or year of the plot. Who was involved in the plot? What would have happened if the plot had succeeded? So what were the steps? Which country would have come over and invaded and so on? Why did the plot fail? What were the consequences of the plot? What happened to certain people? Did they die or were they kept alive? And what happened to Mary, Queen of Scots? Pause the video here to complete this. The light blue slides will help you and then press play to continue. OK, so now we're seeing a bit of a struggle between Elizabeth and the Catholics. Now, if you remember at the start of this topic, Elizabeth had been fairly um, patient with the Catholics. You know, she had allowed some Catholic practices in the religious settlement, things like crucifixes, for example, colourful robes. And she had said, if Catholics or recusants, as we will call them here, do not go to the church services, don't punish them too harshly. But we're seeing her be more harsh with the Catholics now. And the Catholics were responding. From 1574, Catholic priests were smuggled by Catholics into Britain. So they would come from other countries in boats. They would stay with Catholic families, celebrating mass, hearing confessions and keeping the Catholic religion alive in people's houses in secret. Now, the English government, as we've seen, was spying on Catholics at this time. They had what we call a surveillance and houses could be raided at any time, just like the police do today. So what would you do if you were a Catholic family? Suddenly there's a knock at the door and you've got a priest in the house. Well, the houses had priest holes to hide the priests in. So we can see here secret doors, secret trap doors in the floor. And so you would try to hide that priest as quickly as you could, maybe put a bit of carpet over the trap door, put some possessions maybe in front of the door we can see there to hide that priest if your house was searched. Now, if Catholic priests were caught, they too could be hung, drawn and quartered. In 1581, Parliament passed more anti-Catholic laws, being more harsh with the Catholics. Now, people who did not go to Protestant church services each week, we call those recusants, they were fined £20. That was a huge amount of money back then. That would bankrupt most families. And so we see a change here. At the start, 1559, Elizabeth had said, look, if people don't go, don't punish them too harshly. Now she's bankrupting them if they don't turn up. So we're seeing her be more harsh to the Catholics. Being caught trying to convert people into being a Catholic 
would be seen as treason now and you would be killed. But these laws don't stop some Catholics plotting against Elizabeth. They still want her gone. They will die for their faith. Let's have a look at our second plot then, the Frockmorton plot, 1583. Now, this plot involved Catholic Spain and Catholic France working together against England. These two countries, I said before, were two of the most powerful in the world at this time. And they had been fighting each other, competing with each other for quite a while. But now, actually, they are starting to work together. A huge problem for Protestant England. Mary, Queen of Scots, had a French cousin. If you remember, her family was half French. The Duke of Guise pictured here. The Duke of Guise would invade England with an army and Spain would fund, they would pay for this army. So France and Spain working together. Now the Pope knew and the Pope approved of this plan again to get rid of Elizabeth, but they still needed someone to organize this plot. So they needed someone to basically be a go-between, to send the messages to organize it, be in charge of communication. And so that person was Francis Frockmorton. I looked on Google, I couldn't find a portrait of him anywhere. I gave up after about 10 seconds. So I just nicked this from the Elizabeth the first film. He was a young Englishman, he was a Catholic, and so he was responsible for organising this, just like Rodolfi had been before. He would write letters between the key people, including Mary, to ensure the plot worked. He is communicating. I mean, if they had, had a WhatsApp group back then, this would have been so much easier. However, again, Elizabeth has got people spying on Catholics, just like Frockmorton. And this person here, Francis, Sir Francis of Walshingham, one of my favourite people in this topic. He's an absolute hero because he is a spy master. He has got spies everywhere in England, everywhere in Europe. He knows what's going on. And very early on, he discovered that Frockmorton was working with Spain and France. But rather than confront Frockmorton straight away, he waits. He says, look, OK, we've got a bit of time here. They're not going to send over a boat straight away. Let's see what happens. Let's see who else Frockmorton brings into this plot. And so they wait for a while and then they knock on the door of Frockmorton and they take him away. They look in his house and they find letters from Catholics in England, uh, lords and nobles and so on from the north of England again. Now, Frockmorton was taken away. He was tortured and he confessed guess as you would if you were tortured, and he was executed, hung, drawn and quartered. The plot or the plan was never carried out. What were the consequences of this plot then? What happened as a result? Well, like I said, there were lists in Frockmorton's house of people in England who were Catholic and who supported this plot. We call them Catholic sympathisers. They were sympathetic towards Frockmorton and his attempts to get rid of Elizabeth. This showed that there were people in England who wanted Elizabeth gone, again, specifically the Catholics. This group of people were labelled the enemy within. And this was quite harsh too. There were Catholics who didn't really want Elizabeth gone. They weren't prepared to kill her. But now they all get labelled the same. The surveillance of Catholics increase. You've got more and more Catholics being spied on now. 11,000 being watched in some cases imprisoned, either in a cell or under house arrest. And faced with this sort of persecution, many left England. They didn't want to be targeted anymore. From 1585, hiding priests, like in this picture, was punishable by death. So if you were caught with a priest in your house, you were in trouble. But Mary, Queen of Scots, was still being kept alive by Elizabeth. Walshingham was so frustrated, he was sure that Mary, Queen of Scots, was involved, that she was writing letters, that she was working with uh, the Duke of Guise, her cousin, that she was working with Philip II, that she was plotting as well to get rid of Elizabeth. She was just as key figure as someone like Philip II would have been. But there wasn't enough evidence. He couldn't prove it. That will change in the third plot next lesson. Mary's luck will renounce. 
So task two then, the Frockmorton plot. This task, just the same as before, it's just a fact file. Date to what year did it take place? Who was involved in the plot? Who were the key people here? What would have happened in this plot? Why did the plot fail? What were the consequences of the plot? And what happened to Mary, Queen of Scots? The light green slides will help you here. Please pause the video, complete that task, and then press play to complete today's lesson. And that's it. Thank you very much as always, guys. Please make sure both fact files are completed and please make sure that you press submit. Let's get that work done before the deadline. Personal favour for me, please keep make sure those names have got capital letters. If we're using names like Spain, Philip, for example, and please make sure if you've got any feedback, any questions, email me gbrown at stopsyhighschool.co.uk. All that remains for me to say is, again, thank you so much for completing this lesson. Take care, look after yourself, get some exercise and fresh air, and I'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. All the best. Take care.